Hop Yarvo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How you doing? So, one of the most interesting things. Sorry to shock you guys with this graphic image. I didn't realize that would pop up like that. It's not real, just so you know, if you can't tell. It's not real. But one of the most interesting things about Australia is, you know, the origin story of the modern day civilization in Australia. The penal colonies. Fascinating. Shipping criminals there on a months-long journey across the sea to go work in Australia. Pretty wild. So, I'm always interested to learn more about the penal colonies of Australia. Simple History has this video here I'm going to react to. Go check them out. Link down below. Huge YouTube channel. Some great videos. Let's see. Penal Colonies, Australia. Whoa. Colonial America had been a destination for Britain's criminals for a while, but the American War of Independence in 1776 forced Britain to think of new places to export its convicts to protect British society. In the meantime, however, criminals were in- I never really thought of it within the context of America. Okay. What a fascinating time imprisoned domestically in Britain, doing hard labor in prisons, or in chains from moored prison ships known as hulks. Overcrowding of prisons led the British Parliament to consider Australia as the place to send its convicts. They would establish New South Wales as a penal colony on land that had been claimed for Britain in 1770. How am I so... Like, I don't know how my brain works, but the fact that he just said New South Wales made me realize... You know, like New South Wales is named after Wales. It's the it's the New South Wales. Very south. Very south. About as south as it could be from the other Wales. I don't know why that just... It's just crazy to me. I hear that all the time. And for some reason, just now, I'm like, oh, yeah, New South Wales. Kind of like New York. Oh, yeah. Unlike America, the whole continent was intended to be colonized along these lines. Crimes during this time included pickpocketing stealing goods valued at five shillings or more, burglary, forging, and rioting. Even pin pickpocketing could get you sent to Australia. Pinching a handkerchief was deemed a transportable offense. The offer for offenders- A handkerchief? Was exile to a penal colony or death. The first fleet arrived at Botany Bay, New South Wales, Australia on January 20th, 1788 carrying over 700 convicts, as well as their families and over 500 Marines and officers. They sent their families with them? I mean, honestly, that's kind of thoughtful. <laughs> the penal colony was then established at Port Jackson at Sydney Cove. More penal colonies were- The crazy thing is I can imagine this is actually what they looked like. Knowing the conditions of those ships, man, if you survived the trip, You'd probably show up like this, huh? Established afterwards across Australia in the 19th century. Once the convicts arrived, the governor separated and sorted them into gangs based on their skills. Skilled convicts, such as carpenters, blacksmiths, and stonemasons, could be used for government works programs such I just had to say those prison outfits are insane. Such as building roads, bridges, courthouses, hospitals, or working on government farms. Unskilled convicts would be assigned to laboring work such as gathering and burning seashells to create lime mortar or breaking rocks into gravel for the construction projects. Free Jeez, dude, I can't even imagine. My back hurts just thinking about it. Don't be a pickpocket. It's not worth it. Don't steal a handkerchief. My God, back-breaking work for, for how freaking long? Years? Settlers, people who had voluntarily settled in Australia, and convicts that had done their time also picked such convicts they wanted to work for them as servants. Wait, wait, wait. After you were done with your sentence as a convict, you could now enslave other convicts? Women made up 15% of the convict population and were employed as domestic servants to the officers, or worked in the female factories where they made clothes or did hard labor at the wash tubs. Many women married quickly, as male free settlers were often looking for a wife. At first, convicts would- They were probably a hot commodity, huh? Because they said 15%. That's not a lot. 
That is not a lot. It was mostly a sausage fest down there. Or their own clothing. But as more free settlers started to arrive, there was a necessity for a uniform to distinguish the innocent from convicts. From the early 1800s, a party-colored uniform was introduced. This yellow and black uniform resembled... Couldn't they have at least made it short sleeve? It's freaking Australia. ...resembled the costumes worn by court jesters in the medieval period, which was designed to humiliate the convicts. The broad arrows showed that the clothes... That is so unnecessary. Dude, humans are mean. ...clothing and the convict was government property. Discipline was harshly enforced by the military guards. Flogging, heavy ankle irons or chains, the treadmill and solitary confinement in dark, dumb cells all served as punishments for prisoners who were lazy or unruly at their job. Convicts that continued to cause problems. Dude, it's crazy. That is crazy. I wonder if that treadmill was actually used in some way to power something. ...were sent to more remote penal colonies or prisons in Norfolk Island, Port Macquarie, and Morton Bay. For women, punishments included having their heads shaved or placed in solitary confinement. Convicts tried to escape, but the wilderness of the Australian continent and starvation acted as a deterrent. The Aboriginal people... That's crazy to think, man. That's crazy to think. That makes so much sense. You escape in Australia? I mean, especially if it's like in, you know, the interior of Australia. Inland. That's a harsh place to try to... I mean, you're done for, pretty much had lived in Australia for 60,000 years before the arrival of Europeans. Desperate convict escapees took to stealing from them and many fights occurred. Oh my God, what a crazy ass time, dude. Stealing from Aboriginals. I was thinking, you know, why don't you go befriend the Aboriginals? I mean, that might be hard to do, granted. But if you could, that would be your only way. You escape, then you go befriend the aboriginals. Maybe you offer to do some hard hard labor for them. I'm not even joking. Like maybe that that's your only that's your only way out. Don't fight them. Prison time for convicts could range from seven years to life. Convicts who worked hard would obtain a ticket of leave or a pardon, and these were frequently granted after four years for those with a seven-year sentence. Once they had a ticket of leave, they could work- Only four years for stealing a handkerchief, if you work hard enough. Work for themselves and own property. The types of pardon also determined whether they were allowed to stay in Australia or travel anywhere in the world. Few convicts actually returned to England because they couldn't afford the transportation back. From 1788 to 1868, it's estimated that around 165,000 convicts were transported by the British government to various penal colonies in Australia. Holy shit, it's so many. What's kind of crazy watching that is I think like, you know, they're all doing like hard labor out there. And that's a lot of the Australian economy today is made up of hard labor, miners out there. You know, it's like it's, it's in the culture. And of course, the Australian land is just a gold mine of different natural resources. Subscribe and click the notification. Damn, that is crazy, man. I cannot, I, I'll never be able to get over that. That that is the origin story of modern day Australia. And somehow y'all went from that to being the most chill people on earth. And so friendly. And, and so prosperous, it's pretty freaking amazing. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to go stare at the moon, which is going to be in front of the sun. Wish me luck. Goodbye.